Everyone, welcome back to another episode of Astro Pill. Thanks for tuning in. We're playing more one shot today, and Nico is about to speak her feelings about her experiences. And I don't know how much she's going to share, but let's give it a listen. Um, it's her her reason for wanting to push forward. You know, even though these two right here, they're very concerned about us. They don't want to throw us out into the squares. Nico wants to keep going. All right, let's check it out. When I came to this world a long time ago. Back then, all I wanted was to go home. Astropil, do you remember? The very first time. I'm not sure how far back it was for you. Oh, it's been a very long time since we uh, first started our very first run through. <laughs> but I remember towards the end, I actually wasn't sure anymore. About the sun, right? Yeah. About going home. Even knowing the world would be doomed eventually, I... I still wanted the people here to be happy. So, when you told me to return home back then... So they do remember your playthrough. You do remember my decision. That was very, very difficult for me too. And I was also very confused and also very distraught about the fate of the people here. I wasn't sure. Did I trust you more, Astropil? Oh, but I trusted you more, Astropil. But then I just came back. You... What? And then, I found out about the world being like this. <sighs> Prototype said to forget the things he told me. And Cedric told me not to think about it too much, but... I... I'm sorry for getting upset at you, back at the mines. Oh, Nico! Nico! I thought, for you to know all that, yet continue doing this, it... it just seemed cruel. But then, I realized something. You really wanted to save both the world and me. You know, Nico, you understand. I do. I do want to save both of you, and that's why I came onto this run, to hope for a better ending, to hope to save both. I'm so glad that we're having this conversation, me and this fictional character that seems really real, and I love you. But at the end, you could only choose one, right? Is it... Really hard for you, too? Unimaginably difficult. Excruciatingly painful. I'm glad you understand, Nico. It must be. If the world isn't broken, will that choice still be there? Do you still need to choose between one or the other? I'm hoping not. I'm hoping we get another choice. But even if it is, I really want to save this world, Astropil. Even if it's more dangerous this time around. Even if so many of the nice people we met were... Were... Astropil, I'm not... Afraid anymore. That's why... I think you guys should let me go. I promise I'll be okay. Please. Yo, Ked. You're real strong, you know that? I... Go knock him dead, tiger. Well, if George is fine with it, I... Guess we should let you go now, Messiah. But... Promise us you'll be careful, okay? Mm-hmm. You guys be safe, too. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry, Nico. Oh my god. That's all that's all I ever wanted to hear. I'm that's that was really sweet. I'm so happy right now. Please be careful out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, what book did Cedric take? You remember Prophet Bot? The first robot you met in your in our world? Yeah. The author wrote a book on how he was made. It's one of his best works, brah. You just gotta love that guy's attention to detail. All little parts that just come together. It was the freshest book I've ever edited, man. No, seriously, what's up with you? I, I think I think something changed in your programming. Ooh. I wish Nico would notice that something's weird about her. <laughs> okay. Hi. The archival room is currently being used as an infirmary. 
We apologize for the inconvenience. It's okay. Oh, I kind of want to look around here before we head on outside. How y'all doing? This stand smells sugary. Candy skewers fresh off the grill. Not very nutritious, I'm afraid. But at least they'll keep the evacuees from getting hungry. Looks like my life's work is finally being put to good use. I'd like another water pail, please. I'd like to go water that plant. As long as we can serve the water we have on hand. My water pills should be able to keep everyone here from going thirsty for weeks. Oh, that's good. That's good. Actually, that's very, very useful for a you know, situation like this where people have to take refuge in like a shelter. That's very useful. I'm glad. Okay, this coffee machine. Coffee machine, it's almost empty. I don't know why that's that's they're just always noticing that. Did you need something? Please approach the front from the front. Okay. I mean, is that I guess it's all your okay. Okay. Guess we can't go back there. Hi, you're the one who didn't sleep for a super long time because you had to know what happened in the book. Oh, hold on. Sorry about that. It's been a little while since uh our house is at other people. Uh, family's been away and they're back now, so back to regular uh, random garage things going on, which you'll never hear because I'm always gonna remove it, but it, it just kind of surprised me because it's been, it's the first time in a while. <laughs> Sorry about that. I need to find out how this book ends. <laughs> I don't know why I gave him that voice, but. Um, if I die, I wanna die reading. Very, that's a lot of dedication. You're very dedicated. Oh my god. Holy hell. Okay. The city gate was destroyed a while back. I can't go into the glen anymore. I'm not sure where I'll be able to get my supply of fish at this rate. Oh, okay. So that's where you were getting your fish before. Cool. I still have plenty of these soup dumplings left. Oh, I gave the... I, <laughs> this was the one that had the, the, the accent. I still have plenty of soup dumplings left. It was this guy. I, I thought it was the toaster guy. Looks like it should feed everyone here for at least another day. Oh, that's not a lot of time. I gotta hurry. A kitty. Oh, it's the big machine. It really blended in with the background this time. Kitty. Meow. <laughs> Cute. Hi, machine. Can we talk to you? Uh, hello? Uh, hello? <laughs> the world is going to be much colder soon. At least I can keep everyone here warm. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, you're good at that. That's what you're good at. A computer. It's currently off. Okay, uh, where are the other- I want to talk to everyone in here, see how you're doing. You know, I finally saw the author today, you did? Yes, you saw him? He was here? What? Well, his flying machine at least. Oh, okay, that wasn't him. That was a son. I was looking out one of the windows in the library and spotted it in the distance with my binoculars! Isn't that cool, Messiah? I mean, with your binoculars or with your eyes? <laughs> with your face eyes. Yeah. At least that's finally off my bucket list. Well, you didn't see him, see him. You gotta meet him. That's gotta be the other thing on your bucket list. Hi. When the world ends, would it be better if it was gone in an instant or slowly fading away? That's your same dialogue from the first uh, run of it. <laughs> Looks like we're stuck with the latter. I remember you. I mean, I ended it instantly the first time around. I'm not sure if that was much better. Um... What are you doing to that book? You're still crossing it out? Stop doing that! Don't compare yourself to the, to the author! Editing it! I've been in the author's shadow for my entire career. If I'm gonna die soon, I wanna die knowing I put out at least one original idea out there. Well, I mean, wasn't it that you were doing a bunch of original ideas, but then you were afraid that since the author was writing about it, that they would praise him, them, and... It's like, oh, I did it first, but everyone's recognizing him. Unless you mean like, you're trying to find something he hasn't written about, even though he's written about pretty much everything. Well, you go girl, you got this. Despite all this, I still really wish I could have met the author. Aww, bitter rival, but she's like, admires him, but hates him. And I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe he'll come by. Maybe he'll, st he'll stop to meet everybody. I don't know. Who are you? Oh, you're one of the scientists. You're one of the sleepy scientists. I remember you. The lab complex got totaled, didn't it? Yeah. All those hours I put into my work. And now, now. She fell asleep. Oh, poor thing. I'm so sorry. Okay, hi there. Hello. Robots are the only ones that can send out, uh, w that we can send out there now. 
Thankfully, we still have a couple of units that aren't too badly damaged. <sighs> it's comforting to see the faith you have in Astropil Messiah. That's why I won't lose hope either. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man. He's just sighing. Okay, got it. I had to leave my aquarium behind when they were sounding the sirens earlier. I wish I had time to rescue my fish. Oh no! Did you get to save at least two fish? Are there any swimming around your head? I can't really tell. Well, I hope you got to save it. Maybe you could have just scooped a couple and dumped them in your head. Oh, we'll save them. We'll save everybody. Monitoring. Monitoring. Looks like our scouting unit, number 827, is still doing okay. <laughs> He's just sleeping standing up. Looks like I'll have to cancel my appointment. This stinks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just throwing. There's too many characters here. With the world being the way it is now, I'm just glad the author was able to write down all his stuff before everything went off off the rails. Okay. A big book with a black clover on the cover. Is are the contents going to be any different? The title says, A Comprehensive Guide to Phosphors. Oh no, it's the same, I think. Uh, let me scan it with my eyeballs really quick. Um, yeah, no, I think it's the same. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh, <laughs> sorry, okay. Another group of evacuees should be arriving soon. I hope my friends are okay. Yeah, I hope so too, dude. There, I don't know what, what's going on up there. I don't know if Elevator Man is okay. The dry erase board is made of metal. And I think this would be the same too. It was about the shrimp, the glowy things. Okay. I wonder where the author is. Apparently he just kind of stopped showing up. Uh, the head librarian says she's uh, still getting his manuscripts, but no one has seen him in person in so long. <sighs> Many people have been assuming the worst. Oh, uh, I hope the author is safe. I hope so too. We haven't gotten to meet him. I'm sure we'll get to meet him eventually, right? You're going through those pages pretty fast. Actually, it's mostly pictures. The author is an artist too, you know? I could tell, yeah. Why Why did she sit, seem kind of defeated about that? <laughs> Let's see. There's still a couple NPCs that I've not seen. They're probably, oh no, it's the guy that was screaming about his robot. The world is ending, what are we gonna do? Oh, you, <laughs> oh no. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> a photo of some people. What? You need something? No. Suit yourself. But, just so that you know, due to recent events, the restriction on noise levels in the library has been temporarily lifted. So I won't be kicking people out like before, even though you're the one yelling at the top of your lungs, bub. You should follow your own rules, hmm? Um... What? You think I'm gonna be throwing out the evacuees just cause I'm a delinquent stuck doing community service? Oh! <laughs> that explains so much. <laughs> no? Good, because I'm not! All right, well, uh... <laughs> this guy scares me, Astro Pill. Okay, 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 Nico, sweetie. You don't have to talk to him anymore. You don't have to talk to the scary delinquent. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> this library was built fairly recently, you know. Shortly after the first squares appeared, they wanted to build something that could withstand partial collapse. The architects used the newest, strongest materials they had. Thank goodness for that. Yeah, I'm glad too. Everyone here should be safe for now. Okay, just some books. I think there was a blue-haired girl here. Oh, hello! The library is currently being used as a shelter right now. Lots of those squares are starting to show up on the streets. I know. We're still waiting on another group of evacuees. One of the apartments on the other side of town got really messed up yesterday. Oh, I really hope they're okay. They're all kind of stuck up there. Why would they make it so difficult to like switch between, like why would they only have one mode of transportation between um, the surface and up there? I don't know, that's strange to me. Who, who was this character? Oh, the newspaper robot. Evening news, evening news. Everything is terrible! Thank you, very helpful. Extremely helpful. Hi, you're the Coke bottle head. Reading helps me get my mind off things. Okay, and these were the robots. Reshelving in progress. Yep, still scared of ladders. 
Hello, person. Hi. Reshelving in progress. Please watch out for potential falling books. I will. All right, just gonna look around, and I think that is about everybody. Okay. Um, guess I'm heading out. Hi there. Hello, person. This is the library slash temporary shelter. Oh yeah, they were standing outside before, I remember that. Okay, so we're here. I'm just gonna peek around real quick. Um, oh, okay, I was like confused. So we got teleported here because, you know, there was a bunch of rumbling, squares going on. Okay, so we are still headed to the alleyway. I don't think we can teleport freely just yet. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much the only location we've properly hit. Well, what about the tower? I'm guessing there's gonna be cutscenes so we can't like just teleport where we want to. Okay. Uh, that was the laboratory, which we do not have access to anymore, right? Wait, wait, which way? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, I think this brings us right back to the street, the main street. Yeah, there we go. And, uh, the alleyway should be around here somewhere. Wait, oh, is this the, the fish store? <gasps> oh, it's a big fish tank! They're still safe, they're still safe, dude. Actually, it's, uh, you could probably, there's a through way to walk to it, but I mean, it's probably very dangerous. You could be slapped by squares at any moment, so it's totally understandable, but they're okay for now. Jeez, that's a crap ton of squares. Okay, here we are. Is the ram symbol still there? Oh, I can't even go look. Okay. Well, there's only one way to go, which I hadn't returned to uh, in all of the previous run after we'd uh, encountered it, so now we're coming back. All right, here we go. Hi, Ru. Are you here? Hey, there you are! Oh, you're so cute! You're so cute! <gasps> you're here! Nico! Are you... are you Rue? Yes. Did you already meet the others? Yeah, but... Everything is in place then. Come on, let's go back to the clock room. Oh, he's, she's following us! She's so cute! Look at her little tail bobbing up and down! It's adorable! Okay, wait. I uh, don't quite remember how to get back there. We have to access the tower. Oh, which should be up here, I think. Wait, uh, yeah, I think I can get through this way. I think that's the case. Okay. I'm not sure if she should have, like, a deep womanly serene spirit voice, because that's the, the initial voice that we went with, or, like, a high-pitched small animal voice. I don't really know which. Uh, where is access to the tower? I, I think it's here. I think it's here. Because I remember, um, Lamp Guy once told us to go down the street and then turn the corner. And then we'd be able to access the lab. Okay, there's the lab and here's the tower. Okay, here we go, here we go. Oh my gosh. You guys, I- lately I've been getting a ton of, um, these prepackaged salads at the local grocery store and they're just so good. I'm obsessed with Caesar salad. Ask anyone and you will know. It's, I love getting that salad as an appetizer at every restaurant. Um, but they're super good and it's like three of these packaged things for $10 or something like that. It was really tasty. Um, even though it's kind of late at night right now, I went and just made a grocery trip in between uh, recording a couple episodes because I was really, really craving. I was also getting these other uh, packs of, um, it just has cherry tomatoes. Uh, cheddar cheese? American cheese? I don't know. Some cubes of cheese in it, and broccoli, and ranch, and I just, oh, I'm having such a good time with it. It's so delicious. Just going out in the middle, like, 11 at night or something like that, just like, hi, just here to pick up some cheeses. Some cheeses. It's delicious. Where are the other two? Prototype? Cedric? They're supposed to be here already. They... Prototype's body was destroyed back in the Barrens. And I guess we're just neglecting to tell her until we come all the way up here. All right. Cedric was going to bring him back with the memory disc, but he was in the lab complex when it collapsed. I don't think he made it. Oh, no. There goes our only chance. I... I'm sorry. It's not your fault, Nico. If anything... I should be apologizing to you. There's one last thing I want to do. Come on, let's go upstairs. Okay, is this upstairs? Like on the, the big platform? Is that what you mean? Wait, so... So if we're so sure that Cedric didn't make it, and along with proto... protobot... prototype, what are we gonna do? You know, 
This is the tallest building in the refuge. It's my favorite place in this world. I like to look at the far-off buildings and imagine what kind of lives that might be behind each of the win each of the windows. Windows are a big deal in this game. Can you lift me onto the banister? I want to get a better look. Oh, wow. It was depressing for me at first, too, you know? Knowing that all of this is, well, fake, simulated. Cedric told me about what happened to your old world. Did he? I'm really sorry about that. I can't imagine how you must feel. The feeling of never being able to go home again. That's probably not at all, not all different from your plight, is it? It really is ironic. You are prevented from going home by the same individual who never wanted to bring you here. Huh? Who would that be? The world machine. You might know it as the entity. Okay, okay. World machine equals entity. World machine also equals the game program. Yes. Oh, the entity does sound familiar. I think I heard it from the, from the dice lady from another time. Was it the spirit of the world? Yes. But the thing is, the world machine was only built to run on the mental, mental abilities of someone else. It was never meant to develop a mind of its own. It was an oversight. My creator specialized in artificial intelligence for so long, it was simply ingrained in his work. <sighs> and all machines are built with a fundamental law, never let a living being come to harm. And that's why it gets upset when Nico's upset, I guess, and tries to push her away from danger and stuff. It's like concerned about that. From the world machine's perspective, it has to violate its deepest, most foundational instinct. It has to put a living person in danger. It has to bring a real person into a dying world that isn't even real. And I guess that's why there were anomalies happening, because like, she shouldn't even really be here? Of course, the simulation never contained any real danger. The eventual intended ending was meant to be a happy one. But the world machine doesn't know that. Really? Unfortunately, sentient machines tend to handle conflicts in their code very badly. The central conflict triggered a self-destructive downward spiral. You can see physical manifestations of that everywhere now. The squares. That's the world machine's corrupt. That's the world machine corrupting its own code. My creator says it's largely an involuntary process induced by stress and the desire to self-terminate. Your creator knows? Sounds like this has been going on since the beginning, then. Yeah. The disruption was an issue during test runs, even. At first, my creator thought the instability was due to the sheer scope of the project. He spent most of his remaining time testing it over and over again, scaling down the story, reiterating, reiterating the narrative. By the time he realized the actual root of the problem, our homeworld's remaining lifespan was, me was measured in mere days. Oh... Is there any way for us to fix the world machine? We tried. The world machine doesn't believe any of the world's residents are real, myself included. The odds are against us. We have no chance of taming it. Taming? I have heard that word so many times. Yes, please, explain it to us. But I guess explain it to us in the next episode. Oh man. Every time each character from the real world is just dropping so many bombs on us, but there's just still so many questions remaining. But they are answering a lot of the questions we've been asking throughout the series, which is good. So now we, we definitely have a much better understanding of the squares, of the anomalies, why that's been happening. Because, like, I guess it was also never too explained in the original playthrough. I don't even know if it was intended in the original playthrough. Because anomalies were only happening since they brought a real person to, into this simulated world, right? So, if it had just been run normally as a simulation, would these would these particles have even appeared? It, it probably it made a difference though. Like it, it would make it so that we didn't we couldn't go back to previous locations. It moved us forward. So I don't know. It was probably a pretty necessary process for the first run through, wasn't it? I don't know. Anyways, let's continue our conversation with Rue in the next episode. Join me then. This is Axis, over and out.